Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to change the brake fluid of your car. The process is also called as brake bleeding and this must be undertaken once every two to three years or whatever your car's user manual specifies. Every user manual specifically indicates the interval at which the fluid must be replaced. Please check your car's user manual and get the brake fluid replaced on time. Just to quote some examples, the Maruti Swift recommends replacement every two years or 20,000 kilometers. One of India's most reliable workhorses, the Toyota Innova, recommends replacing the brake fluid every 40,000 kilometers or two years. The Honda Amaze has a three-year interval for the replacement of brake fluid, two years or 45,000 kilometers for the Tata Tiago. Mahindra recommends replacing the brake fluid for the XUE 500 every 40,000 kilometers. Hyundai i20 recommends replacing brake fluid every three years or 40,000 kilometers. Brake fluid is hygroscopic, which means it attracts moisture from the atmosphere and loses its performance over time. Additionally, it gets contaminated with rust because the fluid is exposed to various metal parts such as tubes, your pistons inside calipers, etc. This is exactly why after a long period of usage, you feel like your brake pedal has become a bit spongy when you try depressing it. Bleeding brakes is very simple and can be done in different ways, vacuum bleeding, pressure bleeding, gravity bleeding, etc. We are going to do a two-man brake bleeding job, wherein one person will be on the driver's seat, whereas the other person will be at each of the wheel. This is the simplest and the cheapest method because other than the new brake fluid and an empty bottle with a tube, you don't have to invest in a pressure bleeder or a vacuum bleeder. This is the brake bleeder that I've made. All you need is an empty soda bottle, a silicone tubing of 8mm uh, diameter, a check valve or popularly called as a non-return valve which is located as close to the bleeder valve as possible. This wall basically prevents the fluid which is coming out of the bleeder wall to go back inside the system. Now let me quickly explain the procedure. In any brake bleeding process, we suck out the old brake fluid from the reservoir as much as possible but ensure that the fluid does not fall below the low mark and we pour in the new fluid. And as always, we start with the farthest wheel from the master cylinder first. So we start with the rear left wheel, then we come to the rear right wheel, then we come to the front left wheel and we come to the front right wheel. Additionally, for Volkswagens and Skoda cars, the clutch also shares the same fluid. So we'll also bleed the clutch line and I'm going to show you how to do that. Just a word of caution, brake fluid is very, very nasty, comprising of toxic alcohols and ethers. Therefore, please wear a set of gloves and please keep a set of gloves as standby. And uh, brake fluid will quickly eat into paint if it comes in contact with painted surfaces. So it's always a good idea to cover your fender, which is close to your brake fluid reservoir. What I've done is, uh, I have this tarpaulin, I use two magnets like this to cover this part. I also have this very handy tool that shows the quality of the brake fluid depending on how many LEDs that light up. Basically what it measures is the quantity of water contained within this uh, fluid. More the amount of water, more the LEDs will light up and that shows you need to replace your brake fluid quickly. And needless to say, if your brake fluid is brown in color, I'm sure that you need to get it replaced as soon as possible. And the replacement brake fluid that I'm using for this job is a Bosch's Dot 4 brake fluid. This is available in most uh, you know, car service uh, and parts outlet and even online. So you can use this uh, for your car. And let's get started by jacking up the car and uh, removing the wheels. So this is a turkey baster, you get this in uh, many shops that deal with aquariums and all that. And uh, this is an empty soda bottle which already has some uh, brake fluid. Open your brake fluid reservoir. See the color of the fluid, it's almost brown. And that's a good thing because uh, changing will be easier and uh, we can know the status of the fluid. There you go guys. All the LEDs have lit up indicating the fluid is to be changed. One second. Huh? Alternately, you can also use a syringe. So now we'll pour in the fresh fluid uh, into the container.
don't forget to close the cap but don't tighten it either because you are going to have to keep uh, replenishing the fluid as you keep uh, draining it out from each wheel so we have removed the rear uh, left wheel and this is the first wheel that we are going to drain the fluid from now keep the cap safe you need to replace it back so this is your brake blader valve here and we are going to drain the fluid from uh, this valve so you are going to need a 8 9 uh, ring spanner or an open end spanner like this connect the ring spanner inside the number is 8 both the front and rear wheels use a different uh, spanner as i came to know during the process now connect your bleeder hose now another person would be seated inside the driver seat and as i open this he'll keep depressing the brake pedal and that will force all the old fluid to come out of it and once he keeps the pedal pressed i lock this uh, valve and we leave it so it doesn't suck back the old fluid or the air bubbles inside that's essentially the whole process so communication is very important let's see how this is done opening the valve huh? Pump, pump, pump. Keep pumping. Hmm. Good, no bubbles. Keep pumping. Pump, pump, pump. Go, go, go. Keep pumping. Keep pumping, keep pumping. Stop. Depress. Once you're done with uh, one of the wheels, remove the spanner and don't forget to clean this and uh, replace the cap back. Guys, the same process is to be repeated for all the wheels, but this one is particularly interesting because uh, this is the first time I did my brake fluid replacement. I had given it to a shop and they conveniently managed to round off the uh, bleeder valve's uh, hex head. So the spanner just keeps rotating. They must have over tightened it or something, uh, but uh, no avail. I have to replace the bleeder valve. So I've got myself two valves for replacement. Now, this valve is different from the one on the front wheels. I'll share the part number on the screen as well. So we are going to have to replace this bleeder valve and then uh, change the fluid. But it's very simple, you don't have to do anything. Just remove the valve using a spanner or uh, a plier or something. And then replace this. Don't apply too much force while tightening it. And then you do the normal brake bleeding process. When there's no pressure exerted on the brake pedal, there's no fluid that's going to squirt out of this. So it's as simple as that. Wrong direction. No, no, correct. Just come up. On the shaft. Hmm. Oh, that's good. Oh, leak on the top. Hmm. Yeah. So now the thing is, uh, you just have to. It is leaking, leaking. Yeah, yeah no problem. Other force will get Don't worry about it. Ah, okay, leaking stop. Remove the valve. Replace the new valve. Okay. Don't over tighten. Don't over Anyhow, we have to open it. Yeah. So here goes our uh, wall which has been successfully rounded by the friendly neighborhood garage at Palakkad. Look at the condition. This one goes for uh, keeps. Huh? Yeah. Opening the wall. Depress, depress. Keep pressing. Pump, pump, pump. A lot of air bubbles are bound to come because we changed the bleeder valve also. Pump, pump. Pump, pump. Keep depressed. Guys, 
guys don't forget to top up the brake fluid when you extract the old brake fluid uh, from each of the wheel it's very important because you shouldn't let the reservoir run dry or the brake fluid go below the lower level so once it starts uh, reducing when each of the wheels are uh, been drained you need to keep uh, topping it up you have seen that the brake uh, fluid level has gone low so you have to opening pump 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 cracking open depress keep pumping चलो कीप इट डिप्रेस्ड आई थिंक गाइज जस्ट वॉन्ट टू गिव यू अर टिप दिस स्पेसिफिकली अप्लाइज फॉर द पोलो वेंटो एक्सेट्रा थैंक्स टू माई गुड फ्रेंड गौरव हु टोल मी दैट यू नी नॉट रिमूव द फ्रंट व्हील्स फॉर ब्लीडिंग बिकॉज यू आर एबल टू एक्सेस द ब्लीड अ वॉल फ्रॉम हियर विदाउट रिमूविंग द व्हील and you can easily do this so your only work would be to remove the rear wheels check this out guys i've connected both the wrench and the bleeder uh, hose here and you can easily access it so you don't have to remove this wheel now the next thing that remains is to drain the clutch uh, bleeder valve to drain out the fluid which is also contained in that line because it uses the same fluid but for that we need to disconnect uh, our air filter box and uh, the air filter assembly here so we can get access to that uh, bleeder nipple which is uh, located uh, below the air filter box here so we'll do that next Battery holding down clamp. So this is the bleeder screw here. This one right here. it uses the same uh, 11 mm combination spanner so we'll bleed this next the only difference being you'll have to press the clutch pedal instead of the brake pedal insert the bottle somewhere in the bottom karo hmm One second. Hmm. The next step is to insert uh, this assembly back, the air filter and the battery box assembly. Match the two uh, bolt ends or the studded ends here for uh, the battery tray. These two. Guys, ensure when you're tightening, you do not touch the negative terminal. So the positive part is connected. Next, we'll secure the bottom part of this uh, battery here. Insert the air filter. Now, unfortunately, I don't have my blower with me. So, those who are planning to do this can also bring in a blower to clean this. The 
air filter is connected. Now we have to secure this uh, hose properly. That's inserted. Now connect the mass airflow sensor cable. That's also done. We'll connect the vacuum hoses. That's also connected. The last thing to do is uh, the negative terminal here. So guys, check this out. This is brand new brake fluid. And this is the old one which we just uh, flushed from the complete uh, braking hydraulic system. Guys, we've completed the brake bleeding on all the four wheels and the clutch and uh, we'll test what is the quality of the fresh fluid inside the reservoir now. So I hope uh, that completes this uh, DIY. I hope you found it useful. Let me know if you have any comments. I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you so much, guys.